Good evening, everyone. This is Brother John from Revival Hour, and um, well, tonight we're starting a series on Christian singleness, you may say. I want to talk to singles, and um, I want to do it maybe for, I don't know, two, three, four, five weeks for the next Wednesdays at 7 p.m. <clears throat> Halifax time, and um, just speak from my heart and uh, give some give some scriptures and uh, be able to help you out. Uh, you know, and the best help that we can get sometimes is uh, if you send me an email <clears throat> with some of the things, questions you may have, and that is be- the best way as well to target. So rather than me sitting down with you and talking about singleness, you know, uh, it will be good for you to send some of the questions, some of the concerns that you have, because it's such a wide subject, you know, that it's not a one session or two sessions, but I think that it's, uh, we, you know, these are the things that we need to talk about. And unfortunately, churches are not addressing these things, you know, um, uh, while, you know, uh, Christian singles, you know, are going through a hard time and they need to be ministered to. But, you know, you have uh, single parents, you know, sing- singles, you have married couples, you have youth, you have young people, you have adult classes, you have seniors, you have so many things going in a church that, you know, you'll be blessed if you have a teaching on, on, on singleness uh, once a year, if that. Um, you know, and for the past year, you know, when we were facing COVID and all of that, you know, have we been talking about these things? So it's really been in my heart to talk about it. So I hope that um, you listen to it. You know, if things if things hit home while I'm talking, don't turn it off. You know, just be open minded and um, and see what what the Holy Spirit can say to you and help you out as a single person. So you can be a single parent, you can be a single person, but I think that the Word of God applies to all, okay? And uh, I will be addressing single parents, those that have uh, kids, uh, but you're by yourself. So um, let's see what the Word of God says. So I want to I wanna pick a scripture from Galatians chapter 6. And, uh, it says, you know, it's, it's not a scripture that people... Um, uh, talk about when when they're talking to single people. But I believe that this has a lot to do because it's the foundation of everything. And uh, so Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 on. And um, I'll be reading from the Amplified Bible. So uh, get the Bible, get the, get the verse, and uh, let's open up in prayer. Father God, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for this time that we have with you. Thank you, Father, for uh, those that are single and uh, and still serving you, O oh God, during their singleness. And I pray, O oh God, that by your Spirit, O oh God, you will speak to, to their hearts for the next few Wednesday nights, O oh God, that you will be able to strengthen them, and, Lord, that you will be able, Lord, to make them strong and Lord, that there will be trees of righteousness planted by the Lord, that they will not be blown away by temptations and wrong decisions and all of that. So, Father, we submit ourselves to you and we resist the devil in the name of Jesus Christ. And we ask, Lord, that you will help us here. Oh, God, make the right choices because one wrong choice can cost us years of our lives. For we ask it in Jesus' holy and precious name. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here in our hearts, in our homes, and where we are right now, that you will minister to us by your Spirit, O God, in Jesus' name. Amen. So, uh, you know, and, and, and that is so true. You know, we have to, we have to make sure that, that we are seeking God during these times. And look what the Word of God says here in Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 on. He says, do not be deceived. Okay, how many know that a lot of young people today, single people, are deceived? You know, because, you know, we can, we can uh, move ahead of God. We can make the wrong choices. And, uh, you know, if you make, you know, I've seen it happen many, many times. You know, a wrong choice can cost you 
years of your life. It cost a friend of mine 26 years in a wrong marriage because she never took heed of what was spoken to her heart, to her by the leadership of the church and even the family. She never listened to them. So they, she made a wrong choice. And it went on for many years. You know, some people, you know, they go on in the wrong decision for a year or two. And then uh, what happens is they break up. They realize that it's a wrong relationships and whatnot. And it's not getting you closer to God, but it's getting you away from God. So what happens then, uh, you break it up. And then what happens? You, it takes you maybe a year uh, to get over it. And uh, sometimes more, all depending how attached and how far you you went in that relationship. So, you know, there's different scenarios, but I've seen people that a, a wrong decision can cost them three years of their life. First, they have to get over it. Then they have to, uh, they have to trust somebody else. Then by the time they find the right person, you know, because the right person is, is, is if you're in the right place with God, you know, the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all of these things will be uttered unto you. So we have to be in the right place with God in order to receive God's best. But if we're in the wrong place with God, then we'll get the devil's best. You know, so you have to understand that when we have a need, you know, and we're in the right place with God, then God will fill that need. Okay, whatever that need may be, not a want, but a need. And then, but if you're in the wrong place, then the devil says, hey, you know, that person is single, is lonely and whatnot. And, uh, you know, I'm going to send someone that is not right so that way they can make the wrong choice and I can drown both of them deeper in sin or whatever. So, you know, we have to pay attention to these things. So decisions are very important. And that's why the Bible says here in uh, verse 7 of Galatians chapter 6, it says, do not be deceived. It says, God is not mocked. And in brackets, I like the explanation of the Amplified. It says, he will not allow himself to be ridicule, ridicule nor treat it with contempt, nor allow his precepts to be as scornfully set aside. It says, for whatever, listen to what the word of God says, for whatever a man, a woman, a man, sows this and this only is what he will reap. <laughs> I like, I like the, the way the Amplify says it. He says, but whatsoever a man sows, he, uh, this and this only, is what he will reap. For the one who sows to what? To his flesh, meaning his sinful capacity, his worldliness, his disgraceful, disgraceful impulses, the Board of God says, will reap from the flesh, from the flesh, ruin in, and destruction. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And then he says, verse 9, he says, let us now grow weary or becoming discouraged in doing good. That is very key for a single person. You know, let us not grow weary or become discouraged in doing good. He says, for at the proper time, you see, God has a timing. You know, God doesn't come through in our timing. God comes through in his timing. But, you know, the devil will come and says, oh, you know, God will never come through. So, so you know, wh whatever comes around, then just accept that. No, you know, you can't, you can't rush. And, and a lot of people do. A large percentage of people do. They get into wrong relationships because they're tired of waiting. But over here, the Bible says, you know, be not wary in, in, in you know, do, do not become wary or become discouraged in doing good, meaning being righteous, walking, walking the walk, you know, for at a proper time, we will reap. You see, you will reap if we don't, if we do not give up or give in. 
So when, while we as individual believers have the opportunity, let us do good to all people, not only being helpful, but also being uh, doing what which promotes their spiritual well-being and especially be a blessing to those of the household of faith, born again believers. Anyway, so th- this is a you know I'm, I'm uh, now I understand why the Lord placed this in my heart to open it up today. It's because it's it's, it's right here, you know. Number one, it says, "Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. You know, whatever a man sows, this and this only." is what he will reap, you see? So, you know, what I tell young people is this, or single people, not young people, you can be young, you can be older. Uh, So, uh, and I say this, you know, whatever age you're at, you know, uh, as a single person, you ought to be at your best being single. You know, and Paul said that, you know, he says, you know, know, I'd rather if you were, Single, as I am, he says, because being married, he says, now you got to please God and you got to please the person that you love. So then your, your love is kind of divided, right? But he was recommending that people stay single, you know, and a lot of people, uh, well, I shouldn't say a lot of people, but some people are called to be single. So through what I'm going to be talking about, uh, you will probably know, but maybe you're here because maybe you're listening to this because you're curious about, you know, what is a Christian uh, relationship? How did I find that man, that woman uh, that is perfect for me? And that, well, the Bible says over here, it says, you know, God, you know, whatever you sow, you will reap. So my advice, you know, number one, I mean, this has been, and this is the reason that I'm doing this is because of what I'm going to be saying now, that as a single person, you have to be at your best in your singleness in order to survive (laughs) in a way or to, or to, uh, you know, that's the correct word, to survive a relationship or a marriage life, you know. So, in other words, the foundation of your relationship that is to come, okay. You know, if, I mean, if you want to get married, God says, okay. If you want to get married, that's fine. But there is a price to pay to be married. It's not just being married. You know, there is a price to pay as a single person. So you know you you have to you have to be ready you have to be prepared, you know we learn from Esther, we learn from people in the Word of God they have to be ready for whatever's to come and you know I'm doing a series on preparing preparation for persecution it's the same way so if we're preparing for the end times if we're preparing for a relationship there are things that we have to do so you know you say okay you know wh- what do you want to do you want to get married okay so let's work it backwards. What do you have to do now as a single person in order for you to be married in a month, two months, three months, three years, whatever time, whatever length of time? So what are the things that you have to do? So that means that you have to prepare. So, you know, if you're not, you know, uh, you know this is the reason that I'm doing this because of the statement that I'm making right now. If you're not at your best spiritually in your singleness, whatever relationship you get into, whatever marriage you get into, it can be catastrophe. Why? Because the foundation was not there. So as a single person, you have to build the foundation for what's to come. You know? So... Does God want me married? Well, if you want to be married, absolutely. But I'm saying, you you know, he wants to protect you. He doesn't want you to get into a to a, a marriage that is going to break up, you know, before, you know, a, a Christian marriage will survive a long time. Now the stats are probably just the same as the world. You know, a lot of Christians are uh, ending in divorce and their relationships are broken or they're in chaos and, or they're just hanging by a threat. 
and we see it. Maybe you know you see it with your parents, maybe or some some friends of yours, parents, and and, and then you see the outcome of what it what it is to for kids to grow up without a father, without a a mother present. You know, I had to do that. I grew up in a home that it was split up. So, so you know, th these are the things that we have to we have to retreat and we have to hold our composure and say, you know. It's true that whatever I'm going to sow now, I will reap later. I mean, it's common sense. But a lot of people, you know, they make mistakes because they don't wait, you know, for the proper time. So we're going to be talking about the waiting part today a little bit. But over here it says, you know, um, so he will not allow himself, you know, whatever a man sows, this and this only is what he will reap. Verse 8, for the one who sows to his flesh... You know, a lot of single people, they're sowing to the flesh. And that's the foundation that they're building towards a Christian relationship, a godly relationship, and a godly marriage. So what are you going to reap when you have that relationship? What are you going to reap when you have the marriage if your foundation was fleshly, as the Word of God says over here? He says, for the one who sows to his flesh, to what? To his fin sinful capacity, to his worldliness, to his disgraceful impulses, will reap from the flesh ruin and distraction. But the one who sows to the spirit will from the spirit reap eternal life. So, and this is key over here, you know, because, you know, a lot of people, you know, they're, they're tired of waiting. They're tired of waiting. Oh, I want to be hugged. Oh, I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't want sex, but I just want somebody, somebody uh, around me, somebody to give me attention. Somebody, you know, and, you know, as much as God is listening, the devil is listening to your need or to your want, Right? So, and, 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 and God listens to your needs, listens to what you want, but as a good father, he's more interested in getting you ready for what you want. So in order for you to have what you want, you have to do what you need to do to get to what you want, <laughs> if you get what I'm talking, because the foundation is everything. And some of you that are single parents, you probably understand that. Maybe, you know, the reason that, that your marriage broke up is maybe because you didn't have a good foundation, right? Look at the marriages in the world. What do they do in, in, a, in a wedding night? They already had sex a thousand times, right? And on their wedding night, they probably get party and they get drunk and all of that. And probably they go to the room and mostly a, a percentage of them don't even have sex uh, at, the, um, at the wedding night. Why? Because they already had it. So what's so special about a wedding night if you already did everything that a married couple does? You, you know, a lot of people live together before they get married. Uh, they have sex before they get married. They, 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 they do all of these things. So what happens, you know, what kind of foundation are they, are they building towards a, a true relationship? And no wonder that a high percentage of marriages without Christ, they, they, are, they are ending in divorce. And a, a smaller percentage, but it's still a high percentage than what it was 50 years ago, Christians are ending in divorce. Why? Because maybe, just maybe, the foundation was not strong enough to survive their marriage, you know, to, to have the strength that they needed and the knowledge to need. You know, how many people, you know, be, be, as Christians, you know, before they get married, they, they, they go through counseling, they go through uh, marriage workshops, but a lot of people, they don't. Oh, I know everything. Why? Because I slept with a thousand women in my past. So I know, I know about relationships and this and that and that. And, and, and then pride goes before a fall. So a lot of people, you know, don't want to meet with a pastor to go through uh, 
through the marriage uh, counseling and, and preparation and all. They don't want to. A lot of people, a high percentage don't because they think that they're, they're the ones, you know, they know everything. So they, they, they're avoiding the foundation. You see, when you are born again and you come uh, uh, to the Lord as a believer, as a Christian, as a lover of God, you know, it's a new world. It's a new, it's a new dimension. It's a new thing. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And, and God, you know, God's ways are not our ways. So we have to pay attention. And, and now I'm beginning to understand why God has brought this, this scripture to, to me uh, to start uh, this, this teaching on, on uh, singleness. So, you know, you, you have no matter what it takes, you know, no matter what it takes, look what, look what Moses said uh, in Hebrews. He, you know, the, the scripture in Hebrews says that Moses, listen, chose rather to be mistreated with God's people than to live a sinful life for a short time. Imagine that. So he, ha- he had a vision beyond. He knew that whatever he sows, he will reap. He knew that. So he says, you know, I'm going to sow righteousness so I can reap righteousness. I'm going to sow good things now so I can reap good things. And, you know, a, a, lot, a lot of people, you know, we start like that. A lot of singles start like that. And then what happens? Oh, man, it's been a year. It's been two years. It's been a lifetime, you know, and I'm still single and all of that. You know, why? You know, so then we have to look within. We have to say, am I ready? You know, what are the steps that I need to take to be ready? What are the steps that I need to take to, ha- to build a strong foundation? Well, you know, right here in the Word of God, he says, you know, don't sow to the flesh. That means don't, don't go after carnal people that will satisfy your flesh. You know, I mean, we go out even as Christians. You know, people can go out as Christians and then, you know, the first date, <laughs> you know, they're already kissing, <laughs> right? Or the first date or second date or third date, you're inviting them uh, to, to your place. <laughs> you invite, you know, that, you know, the Bible says, avoid all appearance of evil. Avoid it. All appearance of evil. Avoid it. For a female and a male to be together in a room uh, by yourselves, you know, you leading yourself to where? To temptation. And what is the Lord's prayer? He says, do not lead us to temptation. Uh, and he doesn't lead us to temptation, but we lead ourselves to temptation, according to the book of James, right? He says, they know that we are led to temptations by our own desires. And then when, when we are tempted, then we give in to it. Then we give in to sin, and then that becomes death according to the word of God. So, you know, the devil knows how to trap you. Remember, the devil has been around for 6,000 years, right? He knows God. He knows the word of God more than you and me put together. I mean, he knows what, what can cause you to fall. He, he knows your, 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 your wants. He knows your weaknesses, you know, and that's the reason that the Bible says, you know, be, be aware of the enemy, you know, for we are not unaware of the, of the devil around us. We're not. You know, we're not unaware of the schemes of the devil. So we have to be wise and we have to protect ourselves. So over here it says, for the one who sows to this flesh, his sinful capacity, worldliness, these grateful impulses will reap from the, from the flesh, ruin and distraction. Uh, so, you know, uh, you, you gotta, this is the time to sow. And you say, Brother John, I be, I've been sowing for a long time. Keep sowing. That's the reason that, that this scripture says, you know, don't be wary in doing good. Don't become discouraged in doing good. For at the proper time, God has a time for you. But we have to be careful that we don't sow to the flesh, that do, you don't give in. You know, you don't want to have sex before your wedding day, Right? Because the wedding day should be the special day. We need to refrain from having sex prior to marriage so that wedding night is special with your, with your spouse. You know, that's the way God created it to be. But, you know, a lot of Christians, they can have sex before marriage and then they get married. 
And yes, it might be a special. Maybe they refrain for two weeks prior and then they, you know, Paul said, you know, it's better to marry than to burn. So, you know, I mean, some, 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 some Christians, you know, I mean, the other day, I mean, somebody, somebody texts me, says, you know, you know, is, are there any godly men out there? I says, they all want sex. They all want sex. And, and I think that this lady, you know, invited this person uh, to her place. And they probably went further than, I mean, she didn't go into, into details, but I know that something wrong happened, you know. And, uh, and she says, you know, are there any men out there that they want to love you and care about you for who you are rather than, than, than having sex? You know, and and somebody gave gave the person wrong counseling. <laughs> he says, you know, there are no men out there that will still that will stay pure uh, until marriage, and that's and that's not true. So what what the situation there is the person that the person that this person was entertaining um, a friendship with was the wrong person. You know, you have to try them. You know, I always tell people, you know. Make friends, make best friends, and then marry your best friend, right? Marry somebody you know already, you know, rather than just jumping just because you are in need, you know, and and I'm going to tell you a heavy one here. How do you know that the person you kiss is the person you will marry? Because if a person that you're kissing or having a physical relationship, how do you know that if that person is not you, for your husband, your, your wife, then you can be kissing or having sex with somebody else's wife, with somebody else's husband. Always remember that, you know? So, I mean, you know, you got to make sure that that's a person that God has brought to your life. And God never brings somebody to your life in the flesh. God doesn't bring somebody to your life that, that will have sex and will be, and, and couldn't care less about you. They just want to satisfy their desires and all of that. And, and you know, and, 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 you know, people, they say, it, hey, you know. Uh, you know, I love him. I care about him. He's nice, and I don't want to be lonely anymore. I don't want. I don't want to. I don't want to stay in this same situation. I, I don't want to be. I don't want to be praying and praying about the same thing and waiting and waiting. You know what a waste! What a wrong mentality in the foundation that you want to build. You see, you're not working on the on the foundation. The only thing you're crying out the blues. Forgot to meet some, to for, forgot to send somebody to your life. But if you're not building a strong foundation, a spiritual foundation, sowing to the spirit, not to the flesh, then what happens? Then the devil will send somebody to you, even a carnal Christian, somebody that will drag you down and somebody that will drag himself down because the devil. You know, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principality. So the devil now brings two people down because one, you know, wants to have sex and wants to, to take advantage of that person. And the other one is in great need. So what a match. Two carnal people coming together as believers, as believers. Imagine that, as believers, you know. As believers, they, they fall into this trap because, because they're tired of doing good. Or maybe they, they were never taught about relationships. You know, one guy, you know, uh, he became a Christian and all that, and then he had, he had sex with somebody, and then he says, oh, I didn't know that I shouldn't have sex, <laughs> right? So a lot of people are not taught, and that's the reason that I'm doing this is for you to understand the principles of God and how how much God wants you to have a good relationship. God, you know, two is better than one. You know, God is for that, but God wants you to do it right. He doesn't want you to to have a, a, a carnal foundation because then you will reap divorce. That's what you're going to reap. And then if kids are 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 in the picture, then what happened? Kids will be affected by 
a broken relationship. So God, he, you know, when, when he's helping you build a foundation, he's thinking about your spouse. He's thinking about uh, your children that you will have. He's thinking about the families that will be affected. I mean, it's whole thing that he's thinking about. And that's the reason that God says, you know, build your foundation in the spirit. Because if you build it in the spirit, then you will reap good things. You will reap righteousness, holiness. You will be pure until that day, you know? And, and uh, so, you know, a lot, a lot of people, you know, they get married, but there's nothing different in the wedding night. I mean, they've been doing it and doing it and doing it. But as believers, you know, I, I, my heart goes out. Uh, you, know, you know, let me tell you a little bit about me, uh, the foundation that God allowed me to. I came from the world. I had a worldly life. I was in the bar scene. I was this and that, and I was a DJ. So I was in the in uh, in that kind of a life, you know. And then when I became a Christian, I was so happy that Jesus uh, saved me, and I had an encounter with Him. And uh, when I had an encounter with Him, I knew how real He was, and how holy He was, and how righteous He was. And then, uh, and then I began to have fruits of my repentance, meaning fruits of my salvation. So, you know, uh, at that, uh, the first five years of my life, I didn't want to have a relationship with anybody. I wanted to be so lost in Jesus. I wanted to love him. I wanted to spend time with him. I wanted to know his word. I wanted to be taught the Bible. I wanted to evangelize. I wanted to share my testimony. I wanted to do something for God. You know, so what, what was I doing? I was sowing to the spirit. You know, I was sowing to the spirit. I was sowing to the spirit. So what's happening? I was becoming complete in Christ. Oh, my God, that's a good one right there. So I was becoming <clears throat> completing Christ. So what happens when I'm completing Christ, then God says, wow, Johnny is completing in, in, um, in me. So now I'm going to start working and preparing him for a marriage. So, uh, and man, that was, that was a heavy-duty one. I mean, you know, I, I didn't know anything about marriage. I didn't know anything about relationships. I knew about wrong relationships, but I didn't know godly relationships. And, uh, and, you know, and that's when the process began in my life. You know, God has to remove the wrong of the past. You know, so, so that's the reason that, that in our singleness, uh, number one, we have to get involved in the church. Because you have to be at your best in your singleness. And if you're not at your best in your singleness, then you don't have a strong foundation. You know what happens, you know, people stay home and they moan and groan and they feel sorry for themselves because they're lonely, hoopy doo and you're going to die like that. You know, you're going to die lonely. You're going to die because you're not understanding that God saved you. And maybe you didn't have an encounter with God. Maybe you need to be saved. So if you need to be saved, say, God, I surrender my life to you. You know, I don't want to make the mistakes of my past in the name of Jesus Christ. Or, you know, I'm a, I've been backsliding, Lord. I want to dedicate my, dedicate my life to you. I want to dedicate my life all over again to you, my God, in the name of Jesus Christ. And I want to do it once and for all right. I want to do it right this time, Father God. I don't want to end up in broken relationship. I don't want to end up in divorce. I don't want to have kids and, and, and for them to be affected. Or I don't want my kids that I have now to be affected once again with the wrong relationship the second time around. You know, so, so you have to do that. You know, and, and, and I, I remember in the good old days, I saw young people, single people, coming to church, being involved in evangelism, be involved in our prayer meetings, be involved. So what, what they were doing, they becoming complete in Christ, and then they had their fruits of their salvation, their fruit of their repentance, and then they, 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 they were becoming complete in Christ. But, but, but now when you are complete in Christ, then Christ can say, hey, you know, that person is complete, then I can start working towards the relationship, the desires of the heart, to 
have somebody godly, to have somebody, all of that, which, you know, that's another topic, which I'll probably talk about next week. What kind of person we're going to get? But you see, the foundation is everything. And that's the reason that I wanted to spend today in talking about our foundation. You know, the found, without a foundation, you got nothing. You know, so if you don't want to build a godly foundation uh, as a single, if you don't want to get involved in churches and evangelize and go to pray meetings and all of that, then turn me off and then just reap, you know, what you sow. I mean, what what you will do is just reap flesh. You'll stay home and wait for that, uh, for the guy to come or that woman to come in a white horse, you know, and it's not going to happen, you know, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen like that. Uh, you got to secure your future. What you sow now is what you will reap later. That is very plainly uh, said. You know, the Word of God warns us of these things. You know, that, that if, we don't, if we reap to the flesh, we, we're going to reap destruction, ruin. And that's the reason that a lot of relationships and marriages end up in divorce and, and broken because of that. And, and you say, Brother John, I says, you, you know, you sound like you, you know everything and you, per- listen, I make more mistakes than you, and, than you will put, that you will do in your lifetime probably. And that's the reason that I talk to you like that is because I make my mistakes, you know, so I'm not, I'm not preaching to you. I'm not teaching you out of something that I read and teaching you out of something that I have experienced. You know, but I understand that, that in my, in my, in my, in the foundation of my Christian walk was to be involved with God, was to love God, was to spend time with God, was the time to fast and to pray and to be involved in, 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 in churches and, and, and to evangelize and to do things. But now single people, they're, they're, you know, they're home, depressed, lonely, feeling sorry for themselves. They're falling for the trap of the devil. And then, you know, they, 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 uh, they, they get into uh, sexual things between themselves. Uh, you know, this is something that is not talked about. You know, they, they, they begin to uh, masturbation. They get into pornography. Uh, why? Because they feel justified. Say, God, you're not coming through for me. You're not coming through for me. So, you know, and the reason I'm doing this is because, you know, I'm a man or I'm a woman and I need needs. And, you know, I'm a sexual being and this and that. And what happens, they get into, they get into sin and they begin to build a foundation. And what they actually, they have done, they have fallen for the trap of the devil to build a fleshly, a carnal foundation. Then, then, you know, the wrong person will come to you and it will look like God's perfect being. And then, you know, because the foundation was wrong, you brought somebody that is not in the same wavelength as you are. And then what happens, it will most likely end in a, in a divorce or a catastrophe. And it will affect kids. It will affect you. It will affect that. And that will be a wrong decision that can cost years of your life. So that's the reason the word of God here says, you know, be careful, you know, whatever you sow, you're going to reap. If you, if you sow to the flesh, then you're going to reap destruction. You're going to, uh, you're going to, you know, you're going to uh, reap bad things. But if you sow to the spirit, he says, you know, you will reap eternal life. You will reap good things. And verse nine, he says, and let us not grow weary or become discouraged in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap if we don't give in. You know, other uh, translations, it says, if you don't give up, right? And God's timing, he will come through if you don't give up. But over here it says, if you don't give in, <laughs> you know? And, uh, you know, and you say, oh, but it's so hard, Lord. Oh, Brother John, it's so hard, you know, I give in sometimes. No, no, you know, God will never give you more than you can handle. And he will give you a way out, right? That's what the word of God says. If you believe in God, you got to believe in the word of God. And if you have given in, it's because you were not in the right standing with God. You were not in the right place with God. You were not sowing to the spirit. You were were sowing to the flesh and and your need overcame uh, your relationship with God that you began to operate in your flesh. You began to operate uh, outside of the standards of the word of God. And, and, and that's the reason that some of you are probably in the situation that you're in. So what happens now, you have to switch. You have to repent. 
Okay, if you have done something wrong, you have fallen for pornography and masturbations and all of these things as a single person, you got to put a lid on that. And I says, God, I'm going to start getting more involved in the church. I'm going to start maybe having prayer meetings at my place. I'm going to start searching uh, videos on, uh, on being single. I'm going to get the strength. I'm going to get the word of God. Uh, and that, you know, uh, the Bible says that uh, in the Old Testament, it says that he led us into the wilderness. He led us into the wilderness. For what? To prove, to see what was in our hearts, whether we will serve him or not, you know? And then, you know, and that's when the word of God came and he said, you know, but, and that's when uh, men should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So what happens, you know, sometimes, you know, in our singleness, we go through a lot of tests, right? Uh, a lot of tests. You know, that, that to see, you know, if God can trust us with the person that he wants to bring to your life. You know, and that's another topic right there. I mean, you know, okay, if God has something in mind uh, to bring to, to you, but he sees you being carnal, being fleshly, how in the world he's going to bring somebody to your life? He's going to keep them away from you because he knows that you're going to drag them down, Right? So, you know, the same thing. So, you, you know, you're going to drag them down. So that's the reason the foundation, young people, is everything. It's everything. And, you know, in the next few weeks, we're going to talk about how to find the right person, what to do, blah, blah, blah. But I'll, I'll recap a little bit here. Be careful in getting to kissing and touching and even sex because the person that you're kissing could be somebody else's wife or somebody else's husband, and that's adultery. You know, you, you don't know if that's a person you're going to marry, right? But if you're having sex before marriage and you're doing all of these carnal things before marriage, you know, and, uh, and, and you think that God brought them to your life, be careful, right? Be careful because you could be building a, a carnal, fleshly future, and that's not going to work. So you got, you, got, you got to make sure that you say, God, forgive me. Oh, God, for my sins, you know, and if you have to let go of some, some wrong relationships, let them go. Let them go. Let them go no matter how much it hurts. Let them go. You know, you, you have to understand, I'll throw this one in, you know, it's easier for a woman to surrender their hearts to a man. When a woman commits themselves to a man, they're actually given their hearts. And that's the reason that they're so easily hurt. When a man commits themselves to a woman, they don't commit first with her heart. They're committing with the feeling. You know, they're hugging you, they're kissing you, and they say, I love you. Or you're the... You're my princess, you're my this, you're my that. Why? Because they're, they're telling you that because you're making them feel good, right? And But they're, they're, they're operating in the flesh. They're operating in carnality, right? So they're not, they're not operating in righteousness and holiness. So they're operating in in carnality. So what's happening? And then, you know, they, the, the, the woman always gets hurt the most, you know, because the commitment to a woman is a commitment. It's a full commitment. When they, when they say yes to a man, they give their hearts to the man, you know, and, uh, and, the, and the men, when they say yes, they don't give their hearts yet because they're made different. And we can talk about the difference between a man and a woman. We have different needs, Right, uh, but I don't want to get into that right now. But I'm saying you have to be careful. You have to be careful. You know, uh, another scripture says, "Do not arouse love before its time." That is very powerful. A scripture it says, "Do not arouse love before its time." It says, "Brother John." Where, where in the world is that in the Bible? You know, that's in, I believe, in the Song of, of Solomon. Okay, I believe in chapter 8. Uh, you know, do not arouse 
he says, daughters of Jerusalem. Uh, he says, do not arouse or awaken love until it so desires. So there is a timing. There is a timing. Just like, just like the word of God says in, um, in uh, Galatians chapter 6. You know, at the proper time. You know, God has a time mean for for sex, for making love. Uh, God has a time mean for the kiss. God has a time mean for these things. And you have to understand, you know, for men, you have to understand that the the person that you're interested in is God's daughter. It's God's daughter. And for the woman, that's God's son, you know. And you have to understand that whatever we do in secret, God sees. And if God sees, that's what you're sowing, right? Whatever God sees is what we sow because he sees it. And when the, you know, if I'm looking, if I'm looking at my son doing something wrong, then I, I, I say, okay, I know where he's going in the direction that he's going because of what, what he's doing now. So I, I will say, you know, what he's doing now, he's sowing, and he's not going to reap something good out of what he's doing right now. So you see, whatever God sees is what we're sowing in the spirit. We're sowing either to the flesh, distraction, or we're sowing to the spirit. So you got to respect, ladies, 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 demand respect, demand respect. From the person, let them open up the door. Say, you, 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 you come here. I says, I'm not getting into the car until you come here and open the door for me. Demand respect because men doesn't like, in general, doesn't like someone that is not really a challenge for them. Men love a challenge, <laughs> okay? Men love a challenge. So teach them to respect you. You know, teach him. Say, hey, where are you going? We're not kissing. I don't know if you're going to be my husband or not. You know, I don't, I don't want to, you know, I, I, God has not spoken to me that you're the one. And even if you were the one, I don't want to, you know, one kiss leads to another and then another and another and then touching here and touching there and, and you know, and, and, and especially you as men, you know, you get turned on really quick and everything like that. So he says, no, 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 no. You're going to respect me to that wedding day. And, you know, if that man, after you tell him that, walks away from you and breaks up with you, good. You save yourself divorce. You save yourself a bad marriage. You save yourself from a wrong relationship. Let them walk away. But demand respect as a woman. Demand respect. Demand respect as a woman. Do that. And you will see, you will reap beautiful things in your marriage if you do that. You know, it, you know, man, I said, you know, why am I reading the scripture for, for the first one here? But now I understand this scripture is for singles and for, I mean, for everybody, but it's for, for this teaching, you know, because of, uh, of the temptations that, that, um, that single people go through. I tell you, you know, but, you know, my, my advice to you is this, if you're not at your best as a single, you will reap destruction. Be at your best spiritually now. Don't stay home. Go and get involved in church. Go to a praying meetings. Go to this and go to that. And you know, and don't find, you know, this is the worst thing that we do. We always want to find somebody that that uh, agrees with us in everything. Uh we want we you know, <laughs> you know, somebody hurting, you know, somebody hurting will always want to fellowship with somebody else that is hurting. A lonely single, listen, a lonely single will want to get in fellowship with a lonely single. So that way they can pout and moan and complain and, and whatever together. You understand that? So be careful, you know, you know who you are sharing your life with is the person that you're sharing with, is that person lonely as well? Is that person 
may be ministering to you out of a hurt or out of a bad experiences that that person had, you know? So, uh, so we have to be careful in what we accept, right? That's the reason that, you know, to be saved, you always go to the Word of God and you always go to your pastors and leaders, people that are married for many years, you know? And uh, I know I was talking to somebody today and I said, you know, we have to be careful. You see, uh, we, uh, probably in two weeks from now, we talk about the importance of uh, married couples and adults to get involved with single people. But you have to be careful that they're not the same age. Because what happens if a couple takes, let's say, a single woman to mentor them, the single woman can become a temptation to the married man. So it's better, you know, the Bible says, you older women teach the younger woman how to love their husband, meaning pour what you know to the younger ones. So I, I always uh, recommend that there's an age difference, age difference in, in, in when, when we mix a single with a married couple that wants to mentor them or wants to speak to their life. So you as a single person, you have to be careful because you don't want to go and steal somebody else's husband or somebody else's wife, right? You don't want to, you know, if they invite you, oh, come and stay here. No, the Bible says avoid all appearance of evil. You know, uh, you know, avoid it, avoid it, because you know you you can be going into a trap. Maybe not, okay. A small percentage, maybe not, but most likely you are leading yourself to a place of temptation. Because what about if you're a female, and the and the and the wife is out, and it's just you and the husband in the house, and let's say the husband is weak. And if the husband is weak, guess what? One conversation will lead to another conversation, and then you'll build a bond with that person, and then guess what? And, you know, I'm not talking about something that has never happened many, many times. It happened right here in our backyard, here in uh, just outside of our city that I'm in, you know, and it was a pastor's, it was a pastor's home, okay? They invited, they invited this young lady in, and then uh, they found out that the pastor was having a relationship with his young girl uh, sexually, okay? Why? Because they built a bond. So I always say, you know, older women teach younger women how to love their husband. So there has to be an age difference, okay, where there is no place for temptation, where there is no place for for uh, sin to come in, no place for the devil, right? The Bible says neither give place to the devil. You know, we can't give place to the devil. We can enter, you know, we can be in a place of of uh, of uh, temptation. We can't, you know, and a lot of single people, they do that, you know, and then there is deception. I mean, we're not going to talk about that right now, but I think, you know, the... I think that is good enough for the first time, and I encourage you to uh, to send me an email. And you know, if you know me and you don't want me to know <laughs> to know me, <laughs> send me you know create a fake email, <laughs> okay, and send me an email to Brother John at Revival Hour dot ca. You know, so if you don't want me to know who you are, you know, just send me an anonymous question so that way I can answer it. Next next Wednesday uh, evening at seven p.m. So uh, let's do that, okay? So uh, anyway, I hope that this first session has helped you out. I mean, uh, I believe that it has. I was going to go in a different direction. I had some different notes, but the Lord had me stuck with this uh, scripture right here, and I'm glad He did because you know the foundation is everything, and uh, you know make sure that the person that you're going to kiss is your husband or is your wife. You know, because if not, you can be kissing somebody else's wife, somebody else's husband, and then you're building a wrong foundation. And when we build a foundation to the flesh, then we will reap destruction in the future. So, uh, and get involved, get involved. You know, that's the best thing that I did. I got involved. I was so in tune with God. I tell you, I, I, I... I went to fastings and prayer, and I went to every service. I was going three, four times a week 
to the services, you know, two services on Sunday, one on Monday, then praying meetings here and there. Man, I used to go to church a lot. Why? Because I was becoming complete in Him. And as I was becoming complete in Him, God was preparing me for what's ahead. And even though I made a lot of mistakes in life, you know, we learn from our mistakes. The Bible says, you know, that He will teach us how to hate evil. And how do we hate evil? We got to see the evil inside of us. And sometimes we can trip. We can trip. We can do wrong things, okay, that are contrary to the Word of God. And that's when we say, oh, God, forgive me uh, for my flesh. You know, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And then we fall for this thing. But right away, we, we bring that to, to, to the Lord in prayer. And we repent from it in Jesus' name. You know, but the blood of Jesus Christ is cleansing us there. But don't entertain sin willingly, you know, and don't fall for, you know, if you're falling for all these things that I'm sexual things as a single person by yourself, I tell you, you are in the trap of the devil right now. So uh, you have to get godly. You have to, <laughs> you have to, you have to choose the Lord, you know. Once you're with the Lord, the Bible says that if you're a born-again believer, you are no longer your own, but you have become the temple of the Holy Spirit. So you, you are God's property now. So make sure you, you don't misuse God's property and make sure that you take care of it and make that wedding day special. And say to the Lord God, make that wedding day special. Lord God, in Jesus' name. And even, and even if you're... You know, some people marry the person that they fell at the beginning. But they knew, and then they went right away and got married. So, you know, so, uh, you know, it, Paul said, he says, you know, it is better to marry than to burn. So, uh, you know, get married, you know. And, uh, and ladies, demand respect from the man. That will go farther than anything else. So, Father God, I thank you again for uh, this teaching today. Thank you for speaking to our hearts. And we pray that people will send prayer requests, oh God, so that we can talk about it next week as well. And, Lord, as we talk about how to find the right person and all of that next week and about sex before marriage and all of these things, oh God, I pray for anointing and, your, and help me, oh God, to do that which is right in our lives. Oh, hallelujah, that that will be the cry of our hearts. And, Lord, that you will go before us and make the crooked place straight, O oh God. I pray, Father, that you will teach us, Lord, that you will teach these young people, Lord, that you will teach these single people, whether it be single parents, single parents or just single people, Lord, to endure, not to give up, and, and, and to keep sowing that which is good. For in God's perfect timing, you will come through for them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. So God bless you. We'll be praying for you. Send us an email. Send us a text. Uh, private or not. Uh, I, I read all of those myself. It doesn't go to anybody else. So if you go to Brother John at RevivalHour.ca, it comes directly to me. And the text through, the, <clears throat> through this page, uh, Revival Hour then um, that comes directly to me as well. And if you want to follow us on uh, YouTube, all of these teachings will be on YouTube as well. And uh, how do you find it? You, you type on YouTube, Revival Hour Ministries. And then there's two pages that will come in. And one of them is John, capital A, period. That's the page. You click on that. And there is about 300 programs there, teachings right there. Anyway, so God bless you, love you, and I'm so grateful that God, he's wanting me to do this for you. And uh, make sure that you mark in your calendar next Wednesday at 7 p.m. So God bless you, love you, and uh, this is Brother John from Revival Hour, and I'm fighting for the youth, for singles, for you. God bless you. Bye for now.